Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Aaron from Black Swamp Outdoors. Today I've got a little quick video for you guys. Uh, pretty much an unboxing of the CVA Scout. This is the pistol version and mine is chambered in 300 AAC Blackout. So let's take a look at it. Alright y'all, so since my box is, uh, this box is so big here, even for a handgun, which it is a rather large handgun, um, I'm just going to show it to you kind of standing up so you'll have to mind my shaky camera i'm not on the tripod uh it's a pretty simple box ships in a pretty plain jane box oh we've got some dealer information on this side caliber firearm info stuff like that so we'll give you a peek inside the box real quick it's real real basic uh shipping box here got some foam blocks here kind of wedged in between here uh keep it from uh, sliding around you've got your obligatory trigger lock some sling studs for the front and the back which is pretty cool and we've got some paperwork here inside you will find a uh, warranty registration card your user handbook and then a safety booklet as well all right folks we got the cva scout pistol out of the box sitting here on the bench top and we'll take a little look at it here um we'll go ahead and start at the front here uh these are bergara barrels on these this is a 14 inch barrel on the pistol uh, if you get the rifle version, they're a 16-inch barrel. These are getting a little difficult to come across. It looks like from my research, they came out like six to seven years ago, something like that. I understand that 300 Blackout's a little more expensive. It's kind of a niche caliber for those that like to suppress or shoot subsonics or whatever. Um, I think it's applicable for sure, even in the supersonic capacity unsuppressed. I think it's just a, a really neat caliber. So I don't think these went over really well um, compared to like their, you know, their their hunting, more hunting style calibers like the newer 350 Legend, 450 Bushmaster, 243, uh, stuff like that. But I really do enjoy 300 Blackout, so I found mine in 300 Blackout. And I had to hunt around. I didn't find it in any local shop within probably 50, 60 miles of me. Um, I ended up finding it online, and I ordered it from a site called Modern Warriors. Uh, so shout out to those dudes. As of right now of recording this uh, and posting it, they have one left in stock. They had three left in stock when I ordered mine. So someone is buying them. So we'll start at the tip here. And we have a threaded barrel. As I said before, it is 14 inch. We have a threaded 5 8 by 24 pitch on this and a nice hefty uh, true to size thread protector. So if you don't choose to run a muzzle device or a suppressor, it doesn't look bad. It looks pretty nice. So uh, it's, it's fairly seamless. Threads seem to be of good quality. They're nice and smooth, no catches, no burrs, anything along those lines. Something interesting I found toward the front of the firearm here is this hole. Uh, it is actually tapped and threaded for what I'm assuming is, I guess, a bead or a front sight. We have a semi-fluted bull barrel here. Uh, we have six semi-flutes that go all the way around the firearm. As far as forend goes, we've just got a plastic or polymer black uh, forend here held on by a single screw on the bottom. And it, something interesting I found is it does appear to be maybe something that they use for one of their muzzleloader lines as well because you've got a cutout here for what would be a ramrod on the muzzleloading version. Flipping over to the other side here, you can see we've got some laser engraving. It's pretty nice and clean. CVA Scout, and then 300 AAC Blackout, and of course, read your instruction manual. On top, we have what is a aluminum rail um, held on by four Torx head screws. And what's kind of neat about it is that it's a weaver style up here, so more traditional um, scope base spacing. And then we've got pick rail spacing back here, more 1913 for stuff like red dots. Got down here, actually scout molded into the receiver on the bottom, serial numbers, uh, import mark, and made in Spain. Uh, as I said, these are Bergara barrels on these, and I don't know necessarily where the rest of the, the firearm is manufactured in Spain, but the barrels are manufactured by Bergara. 
Moving along here, if you don't know this yet, um, that's okay. This is a single shot, single action pistol. So what that means is that when you break this open and put a round in the chamber, you have to cock this hammer every time before you pull the trigger. Then that's what fires it. Speaking of hammers, we've got a ambidextrous spur here. Now I suppose it's not ambidextrous in and of itself, but it is switchable to the left-hand side. Me being a righty, I prefer it on the right-hand side. Moving to the trigger guard, that actuates our brake action of the pistol. As you can see, you just pull down on this here. This is fairly free here. Then you'll come to a pretty stern part. It'll click and break open. Now that action is very smooth. Not sure if you can hear that. But, I mean, for what the pistol is, a very nice action, very nice break action on that. Now, I'm a big Thompson Center contender fan, um, I guess because my dad probably is. They're not a super popular firearm anymore. This really uh, kind of hits home. I really do enjoy single-shot rifles and single-shot pistols as well, so I thought this was a really cool chambering uh, to have this in 300 Blackout. Now, unfortunately, someone has decided that this single action brake barrel uh, needed a safety. So this has a safety on the back if you choose to use it. Um, I honestly think uh, that it's it's just, it's wrong to put that on here. That's what happens when lawyers get involved in firearms manufacturing. But um, I, I understand if you wanna keep making firearms in today's day and age that uh, you, know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So my feelings beside, there is a safety on the back if the safety is on, you cannot cock it, you cannot pull the trigger until it is clicked into the fire position, then you can cock the hammer. Well, a weird thing I've noticed about this firearm is that when you mess around with this safety, I'll see if I can get it to do it. When you mess around with this or if you get it bumped or whatnot, sometimes it doesn't allow you to cock the hammer. Um, and I've noticed that as soon as you touch that again, it will let you cock it. So I'm gonna say that that mechanism, whatever they use in there, um, can get slightly stuck from time to time if you manipulate that and move that around. So I feel it's best to just never touch that and uh, yeah, just be careful with it. So finishing up, we've got the actual pistol grip itself here. Um, this is not it's not by any means uncomfortable. Generally speaking, I'm not a finger groove fan on anything, whether that's a knife or a handgun or whatever. I'm not a fan of finger grooves. I'm not a fan of being told where to put my hands, where to put my fingers when I'm looking for purchase. Um, but overall, the grip is not badly designed. It does fit my fingers. It's not uncomfortable to use. Um, it does allow good angle for cocking of the hammer, manipulating the safety, what have you. Um, and one thing, I, one thing I can say, on the pistol version, when you're going to break this barrel, you do need to be mindful of where your fingers are. If you can manipulate that, you kind of end up with a gummed up mess here if your fingers are in the wrong spot. So what I've been doing is just after my shot, I readjust my grip like so, open the barrel, do what I need to do, close it, go from there. My biggest complaint thus far, um, the pistol grip doesn't have the best looking quality, I'm going to say. Uh, like as you can see here, we've got a big, we've got a big blister from molding, from the molding process here. Um, the fit on it is okay. But finish-wise, is just a little lacking in my opinion. Uh, I understand it is what it is. You know, we've got a crease here. Uh, we've got some more stress marks up top there. Uh, so the, the pistol grip does give a bit of a cheap feeling in my opinion. The fore end, not so much. I think it's fine. But for some reason, that blister and the oily lookingness of that pistol grip uh, just sets me off a little bit. Now... People do make stock sets for these. Um, usually they fit the muzzle loader, 
the Scout, uh, pretty much all models. Sharps Brothers makes a pretty cool pistol grip for this, and they also make one that even has a Picatinny rail attachment on the back uh, if you wanted to put a folding stock on the rifle version or if you wanted to brace the pistol version as well. I'll see if I can get you a look down the rifling there. We've got nice, sharp rifling. The chamber appears to be well cut. No issues putting in around or taking out around. It all appears to be uh, very cleanly machined on the barrel side. One thing to note for sure is the trigger pull. I mean, this might be one of the best factory non-adjustable triggers I've ever felt on any firearm I've ever owned, and that's no lie. So we're going to make sure that the weapon is clear. As you can see, it is. And I apologize for some editing with some odd camera angles here, but I only have so much room on my bench top. Uh, so we're going to use my Arcan Optic sandbag here. We'll just set her down. We've assured that it's clear. Okay, so there's the cocking thing I had told you about. So sometimes it does that when you manipulate and mess with that safety. And the last time I did it, I hadn't cocked it since. Uh, while I was talking, I manipulated that safety. So you can pull that back as hard as you want, and it will not cock. So the only way I've found to do it is to break the action, mess with the safety, shut it, and it cocks no problem. So I'm not sure if that's a my gun thing or if that's a common thing uh, with them, but again, that is just something to watch for. I'm not saying it's a bad gun. I'm not saying that I don't trust it. I'm saying that somewhere inherently, um, when you add something that doesn't belong on something, you're asking for trouble. Uh, so I think that's what we've got going on here. So anyway, back to the trigger pull. We've uh, assured the weapon is clear. We're going to go ahead and cock the hammer, and we're going to just put the pad of my finger on that trigger and give it a squeeze. There is no creep. It just breaks like glass. There's no creep at all. Nothing. It's just contacting that trigger face. There might be uh, maybe a two and a half or a three pound, a little bit. Not even, I don't know if I'd call it take up. It's just a wall and it breaks. Very nice trigger. Another thing to note is the heft of this pistol. It is heavy, so I can definitely see where those sling points are going to come into play. Um, if you're going to walk, you know, for hunting with this or anything like that, the sling would be nice if you're not going to put it in your pack. So before we wrap this up, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get a weight of the pistol for you because, like I said, it is a chunk. So, so with the handgun hanging, we are coming in at 5 pounds, 7 ounces. Before we wrap the video up, the optic I think I'm going to run on this is my Vortex Spark AR. I actually had a warranty claim with Vortex, the only, first and only warranty claim I've ever had with Vortex for this optic right here. Uh, was previously on an AR, I had an issue with it, took it off, it sat for a long time. I decided to send it in. They honored their warranty, no questions asked. By far one of the best warranty experiences I've ever had with a company. But by that point, I already moved on and I replaced it with something different. Uh, so this was sitting in my drawers and uh, I bought this and I decided to put this on there. I'm not sure about the height over bore situation on it. It's a little tall because the controls are back mounted and the battery is underneath, um, but we're going to sight it in and see how it does anyhow. Alrighty, folks, well, that about wraps it up for my little quick peek here uh, unboxing of the CVA Scout Pistol and 300 Blackout. It pretty much goes for any caliber in the Scout Pistol. They're all pretty much the same. They make some other finish options, but most of them are black and stainless steel. But yeah, guys, if you stuck around to the end, I hope you enjoyed taking a little look at this neat pistol. And uh, stick around. We'll have more content coming on it soon as the build develops and I get it out to the range. Get some groups shot with this thing and uh, get some feedback for you guys. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.